everybody, and welcome to a video on the Briar score. Now recall that in the last video, we looked at a couple of features that good sets of forecasting probabilities have. Remember that they are well calibrated and resolute. We talked about those at sort of an informal level in the last lecture video. Today we're going to look at a formal measure of the goodness of forecasting judgments or, for, or sets of forecasting probabilities uh, that privileges sets of, of probabilities that have those features, being well calibrated and being resolute. And the name of this uh, measure is the Breyer score. It's named for Glenn Breyer, who was a meteorologist in the mid 20th century, who used it to score the accuracy of weather forecasts. Now, we've already talked about the Breyer score in the video on the class forecasting project, but we'll talk about it in this video as well and get some more practice with it. Okay, so suppose that we have some proposition P and its negation. We'll just do a simple example first. And we're asked to forecast P and not P, right? As that is assigned probabilities to them that uh, estimate how likely we think each is to be true. So we'll say maybe somebody thinks that P is 0.5 and not P is 0.5, likely. Uh, maybe somebody else thinks that P is for sure true. So they assign it probably 1 and not P is for sure false. Maybe somebody else thinks the opposite. They think not P is for sure true, so they assign it probability 1. And P is for sure false, so they assign it probability 0. Right? These are just three examples of how someone might go about assigning probabilities. Right? So now let's suppose that in the real world, um, P is true. right? So if we use a, a number to represent P's truth value, then we would say that P has a truth value of 1. Okay. Now, if we want to judge the quality of each of these three forecasts in light of the fact that P is true using the Breyer score, we compute it as follows, right? So we look at the Breyer score first for, let's say this is a person A. We'll say this is person B. We'll say this is person C. So we'll do it first for uh, person A. So let's say person A's score is equal to the difference between A's probability judgments and the truth value of those propositions squared and added up. So they thought P was probable to extent 0.5, its actual truth value was 1. So I look at the difference between those, square it, and then I add up 0.5 minus 0 squared. So they thought not P had probability 0.5, turned out to have a truth value of 0, right? false. So we take that difference, square it, add it on to the first. So let's see, so what will this give us? This will give us basically 0.5 squared plus 0.5 squared, right? or negative 0.5 squared plus 0.5 squared, which is just going to be 0.25 plus 0.25, which equals 0.5, okay? So that will be the uh, inaccuracy of, or the score for person A. Now we'll look at person B. Right. Here, we see the a probability assigned to P is 1. Indeed, the truth value of P is 1. So we do 1 minus 1 squared plus the probability they assigned to not P is 0. So it also happens to be the truth value of not P. We square that, and we see that we actually get 0. And that's ideal in the Breyer score, right? In the Breyer score, um, higher numbers are bad, lower numbers are better, right? Because so you have 0, a Breyer score of 0, it means you're totally accurate, like this person here, right? Person B, who 
exactly guess the uh, truth value of p and the truth value of not p. Right? If we look at person c, they were sort of maximally far off, right? p ended up being true, but they assigned 0 to p. And not p ended up being false, but they assigned 1 to not p. So here, they're going to have 0 minus 1 squared plus 1 minus 0 squared. So it's really negative 1 squared plus 1 squared, right? Which is really 1 plus 1, which is 2. Which in the case of two propositions, this is the worst um, prior score you can have, right? So we see, right, that the prior score has judged these three sets of forecasting probabilities about the way that we would want it to, right? The B, agent B is almost sort of an omniscient, right? They assigned one to everything that's true and zero to everything that's false, right? C is sort of the uh, maximally wrong agent, right? They assigned zero to everything that's true, one to everything that's false. So they're going to get the worst prior score. B is going to get the best prior score. And A is going to get a middling prior score, right? Which is exactly what we see happens. All right, let's get some more... Um, practice, we'll do a, another example. This time we'll just do one agent who has more um, probabilities to think about. Okay, first let me write out the general formula that we use when computing the Briar score. So suppose that we have some general set X of propositions that we're interested in, or that we're assigning probabilities to. I'm going to use S to represent the score that we assign to a particular probability function defined over x. And that score is going to be equal to the sum over x of the squared differences between the probabilities we assign to the propositions in x and their actual truth values. Right? So v here is representing the truth value. v of x is the truth value of a proposition x squared. Okay, So that's the general formula that we used in those first three examples, and that we'll use in this next example to compute the score for a particular set of forecasts. Now you may look at this formula and think it looks fairly intuitive, right? What we're really doing is, if we think of forecasting as trying to estimate the truth values of different propositions, we're looking at your squared error, right, or the sum of your squared error over all the propositions that you're forecasting. Um, now why do we use squared error? Well, there's a couple reasons here. I mean, we want all the errors to have the same sign to them, right? So that we can see, we can get a good sense of total error. So we don't want to have some positive errors and some negative errors um, canceling each other out. Uh, so squaring will make every term in this sum positive. Um, but we could also do absolute value to do that. So, th so that doesn't totally answer why we want to square um, in this formula. The real answer is that we, we want to, um, in addition to what I just said, we want to uh, have a scoring rule that's a proper scoring rule. It's in a sense, right, a scoring rule that's going to be stable. One that once you have a set of forecasting judgments you, you, come, you come to, it's not going to, right, you're not going to be able to just using this scoring rule um, figure out that some other uh, rule is more, is more preferable from the light of your own uh, forecast. Um, discussion about uh, proper scoring rules and making that precise uh, is a subtle topic and it goes a little beyond this uh, course, but uh, suffice it to say there is uh, an interesting literature on that topic and uh, I invite you to check it out if you're more interested in this question of why we square here. Okay, so now let's put this formula to use in an example. So suppose we have four propositions, say P, Q, R, and T. Um, maybe these are propositions about, uh, let's say, the stock market, right? Maybe P is a proposition. They could be propositions about anything, right? Any domain, but we'll just make it concrete. Maybe P is a um, proposition that uh, the market is going to go above 30,000, or as measured in the Dow Jones. Uh, Q is that it'll be between 25 and 30. And we'll say maybe this is at the 1st of June. Or something. 25, 30,000. 
are be between 20,000 and 25,000. And then we'll make, uh, uh, no, no. okay, and then we'll make a T and it's gonna be below 20,000. Right? Okay, so these are four propositions. Right? Now, suppose that you assign probabilities to them, right? So we assign some probability to P, you assign some forecasting probability to Q, you assign some forecasting probability to R, and you assign some to T. Right. Now in this case, right, these four propositions form a partition, so we're going to want to assign probabilities that add up to one in this case. And we'll talk more about why next week when we when we introduce more formal probability theory. But let's say that I am fairly confident it's not going to be above thirty thousand. Uh, I think there's a slightly better chance it'll be between twenty five and thirty thousand. Pretty likely that it'll be here. Let's say I'll Point, uh, point 0.6, point 0.1 that will be below 20,000. So let's say that's that's one person's probability judgment. And then let's see, we wait until June 1st, we find out what the truth value is here. And let's suppose that it's actually around 21,000, right? So I'd make the truth value of P and the truth value of Q and the truth value of T all equal to zero. And the truth value of R would be one because right? it turns out that R is true and all the others are false. So now let's score this forecast, let's see how it did, right? using the Breyer score. So the score of P right, is going to have four uh, terms to it we're going to have to sum up. right? So first we have a term for the P proposition. right? That proposition was assigned probability 0.1, it ended up having a truth value of 0, we square it. The second term is going to be the term for the proposition Q, so it had a truth value of 0 and a probability of 0.2 assigned to it, we square it. Next term is going to be for the next proposition, R. It had a uh, probability of 0.6 assigned to it and a truth value of 1 this time, we square it. And then we had uh, T, the fourth proposition, had 0.1 probability assigned to it and it had a truth value of 0, we square it. All right, so in general, when you're computing the uh, Breyer score for a particular set of probabilities. It's going to be a sum. We're going to have a term in the sum for each proposition that you're making a forecast about. Okay. All right. Um, so let's sum this up. So we have 0.1 squared, 0.01 plus 0.2 squared, 0.04 plus uh, 0.6 minus uh, 1, negative 0.4. Squares be 0.16 plus 0.1 squares 0.01. We add all that up. Let's see, it's 0.22. Okay, so that's that would be this individual's um, accuracy uh, or inaccuracy according to the Breyer score. Now, if an agent had been omniscient, right, if they had assigned a uh, probability of 1 to R and a probability of 0 to P, Q, and T then they would have had zero error, right? They would have done better than this agent. Um, and if they had been on the opposite end, if they had assigned, uh, you know, let's say one to uh, P and zero to all the other three, then they would have been uh, further off. All right, so that gives you a sense of how to um, compute the Breyer score for a particular uh, set of forecasting judgments. Um, Note here, right, that um, given that we're we're doing sum, so this formula here is sometimes written as um, an average, so sometimes you'll divide by the number of uh, propositions you're looking at. Um, we just wrote it as a sum, because as long as we're, st we're sticking to one particular set of propositions that we are forecasting regarding, then um, it makes sense to just look, just look at the sum. We'll get this, we'll order um, uh, the accuracy or inaccuracy of different forecasting judgments the same. Um, as if we were to take an average. So it's easier to just look at the sum. But it's important to note then that if we're going to use this formula, um, when we're looking at the Breyer score of particular judgments, we should always have a particular set of propositions in mind. And then we're just judging the accuracy of different uh, forecasting judgments with respect to that one set of, of propositions. If we move to a different set or a broader set of propositions, we would have to relook at everybody's um, or recompute everybody's Breyer score. All right, so hopefully this gives you a sense of how to take a 
set of forecasting judgments, or a probability function, and compute its Friar score given the truth values for all the propositions that uh, we're making forecasts about. So uh, you might have to do something like this on the exam, so I would uh, definitely uh, recommend getting some practice in. If you have any questions about it, please reach out to me. Um, please remember to complete the participation poll for this video, and then tune to the next video. All right, thanks guys.